<laughs> that was mean. <laughs> I, I'm sure you didn't mean it that way. No, but I mean, I don't want you to think you look like a Barbie or something like no, that. No, no, that's right. No, or your you friends at the be, agency would just yeah, go Exactly, yeah. And, and yeah, then this whole counterterrorism persona, you know, you're, yeah, you're supposed to you know, look sort of mean and gruff. Could you give me your full <clears> name and <throat> how we're going to present you? What's your, your current title and your formal title? My, f my current title, my formal title. Uh, well, formal. okay, all right. Well, my, my name is Robert Grenier. And I'm the chairman for Global Security Consulting with Kroll. In your formal, formal, formal position in the government, U.S. government. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, my, my most recent position in the U.S. government was director of the Counterterrorism Center at CIA. What? Uh, it's, it's been seven years since the September 11 terrorist attacks took place in the United States. What has happened in those seven years? Well, obviously a great deal has happened, but I think uh, more importantly, more fundamentally, is now after the passage of seven years, we can see that there are a number of uh, clear trends that, uh, that have developed over that time. One uh, is, is a very hopeful trend, and that is that in the competition, if you will, for hearts and minds in the Islamic world, it's very clear that Al-Qaeda and the movement that Al-Qaeda champions is destined to fail. Now, we, we can't take too much comfort in that, but I think it's very clear that they're destined to fail. Uh, in terms of the, the doctrinal uh, discussion uh, at, uh, at senior levels, if you will, senior religious levels in the, the Islamic world, uh, there are a great many influential people who now dissent from bin Laden and the, the aims of his movement. At a more popular level, we can see that in those places where uh, al-Qaeda has gained the greatest sway, particularly, for instance, in the Sunni-dominated areas of Iraq, in western Iraq, um, they, they have lost the support of the local people. And uh, we see that played out in other parts of the world as well. So it, it seems clear that if one conceives of the, this struggle, uh, this counterterrorism struggle, as essentially one for the hearts and minds of people in the Muslim world, uh, the terrorists are destined to fail. Uh, the problem is that they don't fully know it, they don't fully accept it, and to the extent that, that they understand it, they don't care. So we're still looking at a, a very long-term struggle against these people, uh, but I think it, it's very clear that, that in the end that they are destined to, uh, to fail. That said, the, the one area where they are making uh, tremendous gains is in Afghanistan and Pakistan. And uh, there what was formerly a growing insurgency effort led by the, the Taliban in Afghanistan is now re becoming much more of a regional struggle. The, um, is the United States and, and European uh, nations safer now than they were seven years ago? I, I think that uh, we have to say that, that, that the U.S. is safer now than it was uh, just before or immediately after 9-11. Uh, th that said, uh, I think that we are overdue for an Islamic terrorist attack uh, in the United States. Uh, I still think that eventually we will see one. Uh, there are still large numbers of people who are dedicated to striking against U.S. interests and against the, the United States itself. Sooner or later, it seems to me that they are bound to succeed at least uh, to a, a modest degree. Uh, so we, we're certainly not, not out of the woods. It's, it's certainly not that the case that, uh, that the war is over. Um, but I think in terms of the, people, the aggregate threat to the United States, it's less now than it was seven years ago, at least in my estimation. So what, what's going to happen now um, as you look towards the future? What are the big threats facing countries like the United States? Well, again, I think there is this continuing threat from uh, Islamic extremism. I, I think that we see it in a little bit more perspective now, uh, certainly than we did immediately after 9-11. We, we, frankly, we were running scared for several years after 9-11. And while there is uh, still reason uh, to, to be concerned, still reason for fear, and I think that we will see crises in, in the future, I, I hope that we've gained a certain amount of a, a perspective on this. Uh, frankly, the sort of perspective that we've seen in the UK. The UK actually, 9-11 uh, apart, uh, has, has suffered uh, more from terrorism uh, since then, certainly than the United States has, both in terms of, of successful attacks and, uh, and near misses. Um, and yet they, they seem to uh, see the threat to themselves in a little bit more perspective, I think, than we typically do in the United States. I, I hope that, that, that we've gained 
a, a bit of perspective. Uh, that said, uh, Al Qaeda, for all that it has been, I think, weakened in most parts of the world, has been able to uh, to reestablish uh, effectively a safe haven for itself along the, the Afghan uh, Pakistan border. Uh, I don't see that going away anytime soon, and I think that that's going to be the, the next major front, if you will, uh, in, in the war on terror. Um, the United States will. Uh will be uh, electing a new president. Do you foresee any major changes in the United States counter-terrorist strategy? Uh, in terms of the overall strategy, I, I would say no. Um, I think that there's much about that strategy that's not very well understood, at least at a, at a popular level. Uh, really the heart and soul of uh, the U.S. counterterrorism strategy is a strategy of cooperation with a very large number of, of countries around the world. That's obviously going to continue. Um, I, I think w where I would expect to see new initiatives, if you will, uh, is in the, the Afghan-Pakistan context. And uh, I think that will be true whichever candidate is elected. I think uh, that it will be particularly true should Obama uh, be elected. He has been saying for many months now uh, that we have pursued uh, our activities in Iraq very much uh, at the expense uh, of the campaign in Afghanistan and at the expense of the, the war on terror more broadly. Uh, and so uh, he's going to have to put some, some muscle behind that, uh, having spoken about it as forcefully as he has uh, for so long. Uh, but I think for fairly similar reasons, uh, if, um, if McCain uh, comes into office, he too is going to want to re-energize the, the effort in, uh, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Anything else you'd like to add in terms of, you know, just this is, is, this is going to be broadcasted on mm -hmm. September 11th? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, one, of the, one of the concerns that I have, and uh, that this is not a, a partisan attack against one side or the other, because I'm not sure, frankly, that, uh, uh, that, that, that either side, uh, Republican or, or, or Democratic, uh, really understands uh, what's going on in Afghanistan and Pakistan uh, and the, um, the, the, the governors, if you will, the, the, the restrictions on our freedom of effective action uh, in those places. I, I think that at least uh, at a rhetorical level, what we hear from both sides is, well, we, we've got a, a growing problem in Afghanistan. We need to, to pour more resources at it. That means more U.S. troops. And I think that uh, introduction of increasing numbers of U.S. troops in Afghanistan will very much be a double-edged sword. Uh, we, there's a lot that we need to do to build up the capacity of, uh, of the Afghans, not just at a national level, but also at a local level. I'm not sure that, uh, uh, that, that we're thinking about the struggle in quite the, the right way. So are, but are you advocating to be careful of increasing the footprint? Uh, yes, uh, and I don't think that simply increasing the, the footprint uh, is going to, uh, to win this fight in the long term. Uh, again, I think that, that we, we need to be adopting much more of a locally based counterinsurgency effort. Now, we have been trying to build up the capacity of the Afghans, focusing very much on the Afghan National Army. I think the Afghan National Army itself is very limited in terms of what it can do. Uh, in areas you know, far removed from uh, from the capital, and particularly in the Pushtun-dominated uh, areas, uh, we don't like building up local militias. We think that that's part of the the old past that we're trying to help the Afghans overcome. Uh, but in order to be effective, I think that's precisely what we're going to have to do uh, at a local level: help build up home guards, if you will, and get the, uh, place in the hands of local populations the means to resist the intimidation, which is the major tool being employed right now by the Taliban. Where we are seven years after September 11th took place in the United States. Second question was, what was the second question? Okay. Is, is the U.S., is the United States and European nations safer now? Third question had to do with, there was four questions. Tercera pregunta, ¿cuál fue? What's going to happen now? And what's going to happen now? What to expect? What, sh what should we expect now? Let me ask that question otra vez. What should we expect to happen now? Do you, and the fourth question was, do you perceive any differences between, the, 
the United States is uh, is about to elect a new president. Is do you, do you foresee any changes in the United States terrorism policy? I mean, they're kind of, I think they feel that they're not protected legally enough because of that, which is important. Is that, I, mean, I think, you know, when I, that was one of the things that struck me. Let me look at this one. That I saw that, uh, that I would not notice because I am kind of a military. One of the things would be emphasis on the target of the leadership. Don't let groups of it or whatever. Um, it seems to me there must be some way that the government can harness they that. They should. What is happening is most of the see it's a, which was, was kind of a Colombian model. Right. It was until the, when they started going against the population with car bombs right. and basically creating using terrorist tactics uh, to, cower to cower the population where uh, Saludo de nueva cuenta.